Okay, so we're going to take a look at our skull. Uh, we're going to break this into uh, two parts um, because the skull is broken into two sections. We have the cranium, which is what we call the brain case, and then we have the bones of the face. Okay. So I'm gonna start with the cranium. We're gonna go over the bones and the features that um, we can see on those particular bones. We're using the colored skull because it's easier to differentiate the bones on the colored skull. Um, you should also learn these features uh, on a white skull that comes out of your um, bone kit that we have here. So this of course is the frontal bone, right? It's in the front right where your forehead would be, would be right here. Okay. The feature on the frontal bone that you should know is the supra orbital foramen or notch. Supra means above, orbit can, means the eye socket, right? We turn this bone to the this direction, this skull rather. We can see the two parietal bones, right, on either side. There's no particular feature on these that, that you need to know. Now we're going to look at our temporal bone, okay? So um, there's multiple features on the temporal bone that you need to know, okay? So this is our temporal bone here in gold. You need to know the mastoid process right here. It's this big lump right behind your ear, okay? If we turn it this way, you can see the styloid process, which is this very pointy process right here. Here we have the zygomatic process. So this is the process that points towards our zygomatic bone. All right. We have the mandibular fossa, which is this little arch that the mandible is sticking into. And we have the external acoustic meatus or uh, canal, which is where your ear canal enters into your head. That's the features on our temporal bone. If we turn this this way, we look at our occipital bone, which is this entire bone here, okay, on the back of the cranium. If we take a look underneath, we find two smooth features on either side of our foramen magnum, and these are the occipital condyles. Remember, a condyle is always a smooth articulating surface, okay? This is what articulates with the atlas, the first cervical vertebrae. All right. We look at the sphenoid and the ethmoid bones separately, but just so you know where they are located in the cranium itself, when you look into this eye socket, at the very back you'll see a green bone. That's the sphenoid. You can see part of it over here as well. And then you'll see this yellow bone right here, and that's the ethmoid bone, okay? All right, let's talk about the bones of the face. So we start with the maxillary bone, which is this large, very chunky, three-dimensional bone, makes up your upper jaw, okay? We have the infraorbital um, canal, We've got our alveolar process. Okay, remember the alveolar process is um, the feature that the teeth are embedded in. Okay. The other thing I like to point out to students is when we look underneath here, you can see this part of your palate is made up of the maxillary bone. Okay. And while we're down here, let's take a look at the palatine bone, the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. So this pink bone that goes across here, that is the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. Okay, come back up here. Here's our zygomatic bone. This is what most people call the cheekbone, okay? This little area right here is the temporal process of the zygomatic bone because it points back towards the temporal bone. And you can see that the zygomatic process of the temporal bone and the temporal process of the zygomatic bone join together. They form what we call the zygomatic arch, which is right here, okay? 
other bones that you can see are the nasal bones and there's two of these this is what makes up the hard ridge um, or what people call the bridge of your nose in the corner of the eye socket we have a little rectangular bone that's called the lagrimal bone lagrimal means tears and the tear duct is located at the very bottom of this bone okay when we look into the nasal cavity we see the vomer all right, so this is a little piece of bone that sticks up at the bottom of your nasal cavity. Okay. That right there actually is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. Okay. All right, let's look at the sutures of the cranium. So there are many sutures. We need to learn um, just the four major sutures. So those are the joints where the bones of the cranium are joined together. Kind of hard to hold this guy. Here's our coronal suture right here. Okay. If I tip it towards you, you see between the two parietal bones, here's our sagittal suture right here. If we turn it and we look at along the top of the temporal bone, this is called the squamous suture. And then at the very back, along the top of the occipital bone, between the occipital bone and the parietal bones, is the lambdoid suture of the cranium. Okay? All right. We're going to look at the um, foramen, the major foramen of the cranium next. And we're going to use a white skull. Um, the best way to find these foramina, or foramen, is to use a pipe cleaner. That's what we do here at Tunxis. Um, and so the first five that are on our list are on the very base or bottom of our cranium. The first, of course, is the foramen magnum, which is magnum means big. So here's our huge foramen magnum. That's where the brain stem and spinal cord are exiting um, from the brain. The next one is a little tough to find, and that's why we love our pipe cleaners. So if you look underneath the occipital condyles, there is a hole under there. And that is the hypoglossal canal. Okay? Kind of hard to find. Okay? Just anterior to that is going to be a very large hole. It's irregular shaped. And that is the jugular foramen right here. Now, the jugular veins come out of the jugular foramen. And remember, veins are bigger vessels. They're also not perfectly round, so their um, hole that they exit through is going to be irregular shaped. Okay. Just anterior to that is the carotid canal, okay, right here. And you'll see that this is a very round hole, and that's because arteries, the carotid artery that goes in these holes, are um, extremely round. They have a thicker wall than a vein, so they're very round in shape. So there's our carotid canals right there. And then we have our foramen ovale. So that's this oval-shaped foramen, okay, right there. Now for Tunxa students, those are the only holes that you need to know on the base of the skull. There are others here. Um, so this is foramen lucerna, here and here, and this little tiny guy out here is foramen spinosum, okay? But for my tungsten students, those are not um, foramen that you need to know. Now, the other ones on our list, we're gonna find when we look into the orbit or the eye socket, okay? So the optic canal is located in the very back of this orbit. It's a perfectly round hole. Nerves are also very round. So you'll see it back there in the back corner, okay? And then we have two fissures, superior orbital fissure and, anterior, and um, inferior orbital fissure. Fissures are gaps. So you'll see a very um, long gap here at the back of the, the orbit. That's the superior orbital fissure. And then at the bottom, of this orbit, you'll see the inferior orbital fissure, okay? 
All right, let's talk about the bones that make up the orbit of the eye. All right, so I'm gonna take our colored skull again. Okay, so this is the orbit, right? This is where our eyeball sits. And there are seven bones that make up the orbit of the eye. They would be the frontal bone, the zygomatic bone, the maxillary bone, and you can really see it down here at the bottom of the orbit, the lagrimal bone, that little rectangular shaped bone in the corner, the ethmoid, this is the side of the ethmoid. The sphenoid, which is way back there. And then you can't see it, but you're gonna to have to trust me that it's there. Right down in this section of the orbit, there's a little tiny piece of the palatine bone. And I know that seems weird because the palate is down here, but the palatine bone is kind of shaped like a goalpost and it has two vertical uh, struts that stick up and a tiny little piece of it is found at the very bottom of the orbit. So those are the bones that make up the orbit of the eye.